Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant. This is part 61. Drilling holes in the baseboard ready to fix the main engine components in place. Also, I thought it would be a good idea to drill the holes to mount the lamps at the same time. A pair of lamps, one at each side, require eight holes. I marked the position for the lamps in a previous video. All I have to do now is hold the lamps in position on the pencil lines and use my deep hole marker to mark the position for the bolts. These are the bolts I'm going to use. They are quite long 4BA bolts. I'm drilling eight holes in the board and all of them are 3.1 millimeters or one eighth of an inch in diameter. And even though the camera angle is distorting the perspective, the holes were drilled all the way through the baseboard at 90 degrees to the top. I'm using my Proxon Micromot motor tool, which has a chuck at 90 degrees to the body. These 90 degree drills are really useful things to have in the workshop. I'm drilling all the way through because this will give any future owner of this steam plant the option to mount things from underneath using long countersunk bolts. What I'm going to do though is thread the wood and this is something that I used to do a lot of in the days of model aircraft building. In the case of this baseboard though I'm not going to use a tap. The 1 8 drill is tapping size for 4BA and the 4BA bolts will cut their own threads. It's important to mention at this stage I will only be doing the job this way on the baseboard. When mounting things onto mahogany plinths I really recommend using a tap to thread the hole in the wood then strengthen the threads with some cyanoacrylate adhesive, re-thread the hole and it's a very strong job. Although it's really not worth the effort on a plywood baseboard. This is a socket. I'm going to use the socket on the bolt and see how easy it runs itself into the hole. It's sort of cutting its own thread and it's a tight thread which is what I want. A word of caution though, if you're doing this and the bolt feels excessively tight, and you continue, you may shear off the bolt. So sometimes you might have to thread the wood depending on what you're using. As you can clearly see in this image, the mahogany planks on top of this baseboard are quite thick. And when you first screw in the bolt, initially it may feel quite tight until it meets a softer plywood and then you will feel a difference and you end up with a very clean thread doing it this way. In this clip I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper to clean up the top surface of the planking because in this area it was looking a bit dirty. I'm making this baseboard in a different manner to the way I normally would. I'm drilling all of the holes, positioning the components and fitting them in place temporarily and once I've done the job including the piping I'll remove everything and work on the baseboard by itself. On this steam plant the copper piping runs for the inlet and exhaust are going to be quite complex and it's very easy to scratch the baseboard when installing pipe runs in a steam plant. That's why I'm going to save the varnishing until the last job. It's top tip time and this is a very useful tip. Here is one of the deep hole markers that I have. I've had a few of these and the tips always break off. And you end up with this situation, a deep hole marker that will mark a hole, but not as deep as it did when I first bought it. These are okay for marking metal, but a normal sharpie would do the same job. I'm not going to buy any more of these deep hole markers. Instead, I will make my own, as I always have done in the past. This is a normal pencil. I've just modified it using my one inch belt sander. By simply reducing the diameter of the end of the pencil, so it fits through the deep hole that I want to mark the position of. Simple is beautiful. It's not always been the case with some of my girlfriends, but I do like simplicity. Using my homemade deep hole marker, it made four spots on the board. And just so you can see them clearly, I marked a small cross on each of the spots. What I'm doing at the moment is using a drill bit, which is 3 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, to pilot the holes for some wood screws I'm going to use. And as before, I'm using my 90 degree Proxon Micromot motor tool. I have some perfect wood screws for this job. They're plated and they're not going to go rusty. As these wood screws are quite long, 
then the mounting plinth is going to be very firmly held to the baseboard. Owing to the fact that once I've finished all the mounting jobs on this baseboard, I'll be sanding down the top of it and making sure that the screws do not poke out of the bottom. So as soon as I screwed the screws in, I removed them. As you can see, they have very sharp points on the end. I ground off these points, making each of the screws about an eighth of an inch shorter. These screws no longer need a really sharp point, as the thread is already cut in the baseboard, and as you can see, when I screw them in again, they go straight into the holes. The next part of the job is to mount the Stuart S50 at the front of the baseboard, and I want the crankshaft to be in line with the double ten. Then I use my homemade pencil style deep hole marker to mark the position for the holes, and here I'm drilling them through. Because the 3 seconds of an inch diameter drill bit was still in the machine, I thought I'd go through with that first as a pilot. There's no particular reason for that, I could have gone straight through with the 1 of an inch diameter drill bit. In fact, that's what I'm doing now. It went through very easily because the holes were already drilled. This made a bit of mess, so it was time for a clean-up before I carried on to the next operation. I'm fully aware that I still have to mount the condenser and water tank on the baseboard, but for the moment I'd like to look at this. It's the dynamo. This will be the last part to be fitted to the baseboard. I need to give the job some thought. This dynamo is designed to use a flat belt to drive it, as you can see by the shape of the pulley. If I use a leather belt though, I need to make some adjustment to move the dynamo away or nearer to the S50. If I used a large elastic band like this, it would be very easy. But I really can't bring myself to do it. I need to use a leather belt and therefore some kind of adjusting mechanism to move the position of the dynamo needs to be manufactured. I'll give that some thought to find the simplest method of doing the job. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.